This is a story of Ulf and Siggy, twin children who live in the faraway country of Austria, in Europe. They've started school and were given their first homework assignment. They have to learn as much as they can about the United States of America. That's where you live. Luckily, Ulf and Siggy know about the library, where they found a book about the United States of America. So Ulf, check this out. It's a book that teaches you about all of the states in the United States. It teaches you about big important cities in each state called capitals. I know, Siggy. I'm actually smarter than you think I am, and I can read. Well, that's your opinion, and you're welcome to it. Anyway, the cool thing about this book is that there are friends in the book who will take us on a journey through different parts of the United States. Yes, yes, it's true. Um, there's Willie, who lives in the West, and, and there's Susie, who lives in the South. Yeah, yeah, and there's Normie from the North, and, and Mickey from the Midwest. And finally, Ellie from the East. Ulf and Siggy were so excited to learn about the United States that they decided to go to visit their American relatives, Auntie Ellen and Uncle Ken. Ulf and Siggy traveled all the way across the Atlantic Ocean from Europe to the United States. We are Auntie Ellen and Uncle Ken and we're Ulf and Siggy's American hosts. We'll be taking care of Ulf and Siggy while they're here as well as disciplining them when they need it. So let's join Open Siggy as they join their new friends from the book and learn all about the United States. Hi, Ulf. Hi, Siggy. Welcome to the United States. Thank, Thank you. you. So how can we help you? Well, our teacher said that we have to write poems about the United States and each individual state. That sounds like fun. We'll tell you all about the people and the towns. Don't forget the crops, mountains, rivers, products, state birds, flowers and all sorts of interesting facts and the coolest thing of all we're going to introduce you to a friend of ours in each state and that friend has the same name as the capital of that state like my friend austin in texas or my friend helena in montana i have a great idea for the first poem y'all what is it and here is ulf's introductory poem Exploring Ellie and Wandering Willie travel to places both warm and chilly. For Normie and Susie, there's water and sand, while meandering Mickey tours the heartland. The five boys and girls visit friends and mates named after the capital of each of the states. All right, and how many, sta how many uh, states are in the United States? There's 50. Very good. Exploring the East with Ellie, part two, the Mid-Atlantic. Hi again. Just to remind you, on the last show, our good friend Ellie was exploring the eastern United States. She and her friends told us all about the northeastern states. These states are on the Atlantic Ocean, and they include Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, which together are called New England, plus the state of New York. And now, Ellie has been nice enough to rejoin us to teach us all about the other eastern states. In the Northeast, Ellie gets on a plane and flies to see friends in Rhode Island and Maine. Then the Mid-Atlantic is where she'll pass through to see friends in New Jersey and Maryland, too. Hello again, Ellie. Hi, guys. Nice poem off. And you're right, Siggy. The eastern U.S. can be divided into two parts, the Northeast and also the Mid-Atlantic states so called because they border the Atlantic Ocean, which I'm going to talk about today. The states are New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, and Maryland. Okay, so the first Mid-Atlantic state that we're visiting with Ellie is New Jersey. She's pretty excited about it because I believe that that's where she was born. Anyway, her two friends there are named Trenton and Elizabeth. Ooh, don't forget to tell everyone that Trenton is named after the capital of New Jersey, which is called Trenton. I was about to tell them that until you interrupted me, Ulf. Oh, sorry. Anyway, hi Trenton, hi Elizabeth. Hi, hi Ellie. Ellie. It's true that the capital in New Jersey is called Trenton, but I'd also like to mention that one of New Jersey's other very important towns is called, you guessed it, Elizabeth. 
Thanks for mentioning that, Ellie. The town of Elizabeth isn't far from New York City, and it's also pretty close to one of my favorite places, High Point. Just like you might think, High Point is the highest place in the whole state. It's got some pretty views, and every time I go up there, I remember why New Jersey is called the Garden State. And speaking of gardens, New Jersey's state flower is the violet, while our state bird is the eastern goldfinch. What else is New Jersey known for? Well, you're, you're from New Jersey, Ellie. I bet you already... Yes, but this is supposed to be a TV interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, anyway, uh, we raise lots of horses, uh, seafood, and uh, dairy products. We're also known for tourism. People love to visit the exciting Atlantic City, right on the Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. And getting around New Jersey is made easier by the famous New Jersey Turnpike, which runs north and south across the state. I've got a great poem for New Jersey. Siggy's poem about New Jersey. Trenton and Elizabeth drove up the Jersey Pike to discover all the places they thought that they might like. Hackensack was really great, as was Atlantic City. They found the view from High Point to be very, very pretty. Good job, Siggy. Thanks. You know, I really think we're going to start getting along well on this show. We'll see. My name's Matthew, and I am in second grade, and I live in Needham. Okay, and that's excellent. And do you know what city is the capital of New Jersey? Trenton. Very good. Anyway, the next state that we're visiting is the very small state of Delaware, where Ellie's friend Dova lives. Take it away, Ellie. Hi, Dova. Hi, Ellie. So let me get this straight. Dover is the capital of Delaware, right? Right. And you are named Dover after that town? Right. But you now live in Seaford, Delaware, right? Yep, I recently moved. Okay. So uh, anyway, I heard that Delaware is called the Small Wonder and the Blue Hen State. Well, that's right. First of all, we're the second smallest state after Rhode Island in the whole United States. But we're still an important source of corn, soybeans, and poultry. And in fact, our state bird is the blue hen chicken. But in my opinion, our most important product is paper. Can you tell us uh, some of the names of some of the towns in Delaware? Why, yes. Along the Delaware Bay, we've got Wilmington, our largest town, Milford, and Dover itself. And elsewhere in the state, we've got Harrington and my hometown of Seaford. Ah, thanks a lot, Dova. It was nice to meet you. And, uh, oh, by the way, cool chalkboard. Thanks. All of these towns in Delaware really fit into a great poem. Listen to this, Siggy. Yaw, yaw. Wolf's poem about Delaware. Dover lives in Delaware within the town of Seaford. He often travels farther north, past Harrington and Milford. He walks the coast toward Wilmington, along the Delaware Bay, selling lots of paper products as he makes his way. Pretty good, Olf. Pretty good. I wouldn't say great, though. Thanks. Wait, wait, what? Anyway, so the next state is Pennsylvania, and here is Ellie to tell you all about it. So my good friend Harrisburg, who usually goes by Harry, except for when he gets scolded by his parents, it's always on the move. Isn't that right, Harry? <sighs> That's right, Ellie. It's great to see you. I'm almost finished with my long hike to Philadelphia. It's the biggest city in Pennsylvania and has a lot of great history, including the famous Liberty Bell. You know, Pennsylvania has a lot of important contributions to the founding of our country. And that's where it got its nickname, the Keystone State. Hey, you want to join me on my hike? Sure, that sounds like a lot of fun. Why don't we uh, talk while we walk? By the way, um, they say that uh, Philadelphia is sometimes called Philly for short. Yep. Well, sorry I'm so tired. I've already hiked way up in Erie in the northwest and down to Pittsburgh across the Allegheny Mountains to Allentown and Reading and also Pennsylvania's capital of Harrisburg, which I'm named for. What are some of the interesting things that you can tell us about Pennsylvania? Well, our state bird is the ruffed grouse and our state tree is the eastern hemlock. Let's see, like many other uh, states you've already learned about, we've got lots of poultry and cattle, but we also have lots of hogs and oil and mushrooms. Hey, it looks like we finally made it to Philadelphia. 
What? It's my, my parents? Who cracked the Liberty Bell? No, 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 Mom. I swear. No, it wasn't me. I swear. I have a poem. Siggy's poem about Pennsylvania. Harrisburg was starting to feel very weary after hiking through Pittsburgh, Reading, and Erie. He went toward Allentown from the Allegheny Front, then reached Philly's Freedom Bell with a groan and a grunt. I hope Harrisburg didn't get into any trouble with his parents. I learned that the Liberty Bell was already cracked and he didn't do it. Hi, I'm Jacob and I live in Needham, Massachusetts. And what is the capital of Pennsylvania? Harrisburg? Yes! Right on. Do you know the largest city in Pennsylvania, by the way? Uh... Philadelphia. Excellent. We're not going to meet Elliot from Charleston, who was named after the capital of West Virginia. He seems like an interesting boy. Maybe you all should take some notes, Olf. Siggy, are you saying I'm not interesting? Well... Guys, stop! But... No, no more, more arguing. arguing! Hi, Charleston. Would you enjoy some company? Oh, sure, Ellie. That'd be nice. I'm usually by myself. What are you doing with all that clay pottery and stoneware? West Virginia is well known for pottery and stoneware, as well as glassware. I'm just taking a break and doing some jump roping. Later I'll be moving out to Harper's Ferry to try to sell some of my stuff. Hey, you want to join me for my trip through the Allegheny Mountains? Hey, just like Harrisburg in Pennsylvania! Yep, same mountains. Pennsylvania's just north of here. Hey, afterwards we could cross the Potomac and head out to the Appalachian Plateau. I can see why West Virginia is called the Mountain State, and the views are beautiful! Hopefully we'll catch a glimpse of a cardinal, our state bird. They're also cool looking, and I'm sure we'll see lots of our state tree, the sugar maple. Just like Vermont and New York. And like many of the other states you've been to, we've got lots of dairy and cattle and poultry and apples. Let's hit the road and the mountains. Let me just do this last line. Finished. Check out this poem, Siggy. Oh, whatever. Well, I guess since it is our school assignment. Ulf's West Virginia Poem Charleston skips across the Appalachian Plateau and watches the beautiful Potomac River flow. The mountains and hills he ventures alone, bearing glass and clay and things made of stone. Yeah, good job, Ulf. I have to begrudgingly admit. The capital of West Virginia? Charleston. Good job. So now Ellie is going to move down south and east from West Virginia to the state of Virginia to visit her friend Richmond. By the way, Ellie, why isn't Virginia called East Virginia? Oh, Ulf. That's a good question, Ulf. So Virginia and West Virginia used to be all part of one state called Virginia. Hi, Ellie. Hey, Richie. So uh, tell us, when did West Virginia split off to become its own state again? Oh, right around the time of the Civil War. Interesting. Yeah, but Virginia still kept a few cool mountain ranges, like the Blue Ridge Mountains out west. I love to go there to visit. That's right. You live on the East Coast, right? Near Chesapeake Bay? Oh, yeah. I love to hang out on Virginia Beach and in Norfolk. And I also like to visit my friends in Richmond. Hey, have you seen any cardinals yet? Charleston showed me some in West Virginia. Is that your state bird, too? Yep. And the flowering dogwood is our state tree. So uh, what kind of interesting products do you guys have? Well, we've got livestock and poultry but we also have tobacco and soybeans. Thanks, Richmond. I have a poem. Here's Siggy's poem about Virginia. Richmond lived for years on Virginia's coastal plain. The East Shore was his home, his pride, and his domain. But the Blue Ridge Mountains would beckon him away from Norfolk, Virginia Beach, and Chesapeake Bay. And you know what state Richmond is the capital of? Virginia. Excellent. So anyway, Ellie will be visiting the last state in the Mid-Atlantic and the last state of our Eastern tour. The state is Maryland, and she's going to visit her friend, Annapolis. Hi, Anna. Hi, Ellie. Don't tell the other folks I said this, but Maryland is one of my favorite states. The food is awesome. Hey, I see you're already on dessert. Yup, I already had my dinner of crab cakes, which is one of many types of seafood that you can find served in Maryland. And you guys catch your fish in the Chesapeake, right? Yes, we do. In addition to seafood and cattle and poultry and crops like corn and soybeans, Maryland also has coal mines. Hey, 
I know your state bird and treat. Your state bird is the Baltimore Oriole, named after Maryland's biggest town. And your state tree is the white oak. I'm not sure if you knew this, but Maryland is called the Old Line State because the northern border is often considered the dividing line between the north and the south. My turn to write a poem. Wolf's poem about Maryland. In the state of Maryland, young Anna waits each week for oh-so-scrumptious seafood caught from the Chesapeake. The crab cakes that her mom makes she really does adore, and she loves to eat the ice cream that's shipped from Baltimore. Well, looks like we're out of time for today. See you guys next time. Do you know what the capital of Maryland is? Annapolis. Excellent. And the capital of the United States is? Washington, D.C.